when you open up the exercise file, you should see something that looks like this. Let's, uh, let's just imagine, okay, this is your interior setting that you have set up and done already. All right. Ignore the part on the lights itself. Okay. Ignore them because that is not uh, the teaching topic today. All right. We can simply do so by hiding all the lights away so you don't touch them at all. Leave them the way it is. You can go to... You can go to the TV set down here, okay? This part is called the display, okay? Do you see this part here called display? Now? Follow me on this, huh? just click on display, and then just click on the part that says under the height by category portion here, click on lights. Take out this one, take out cameras as well. Take out these two. So if you click on them, you'll find that you can do a height by category straight away. So you will see all these things. You don't need to for now. Okay, at that. Now on the right click here, you might want to turn them by pressing in the F3 to turn it on into the shaded mode. You can also press the F4 button to change it from shade with ages from this. Okay, so you can toggle this tool just to recap a little bit for you. So you know that they are in shaded mode, but yet. Um, you still see the wireframes available here. All right. Now, before we show you how to map, we must show you how to see the outcome first. So that's why we need to cover uh, a little bit of things here. This part here. So I need to introduce to you the rendering engine that we are using at this point. Okay. So you can go to rendering. You can go to render setup. Or you can press the shortcut key called F. Once you are inside this dialog box here, again, you see a whole bunch of complicated things that will confuse you. Now, do not get confused. Click on the triangle on the left-hand side here, and this is what I want you to do. I want you to hide all, collapse all the headers, so you don't see these complicated 10,000 settings all over the dialog box. Can you click on that or not? Okay, look, if you click on this, it expands, right? You see things that will bore you, will drive you nuts, huh? because it's just too many things to look at. Don't want to do that, because we are just starting out, right? Don't, don't kill each other doing this. Don't kill yourself doing this. Minimize all this. Make your life easy first. All right, you expand everything, I'm telling you, you don't know where to click, you don't know what to do. So that is a big problem, all right? Don't do this. now. Inside here, you will also see five, easily five more tabs down here under Common, Renderer, Render Elements, Ray Tracer, Advanced Lighting. All these are English, but you really don't, have, don't know what they do. Correct, right? Okay, don't worry about that one for now, huh? Okay, we'll explain when we come to that. All right. Now, I want you to pay attention to the third portion down here. Do you see Renderer or not? Renderer means Render Engine, okay? Now, if you click on the triangle again, uh, the drop-down list, you will see that by default, if you are using, if you are using 3D Studio Max version 2018 onwards, you should see five renderers here, render rendering engine here. All right. We are going to use the third one from the top, which is what we call the scanline renderer. Now. The scanline renderer is 3D Studio Max, uh, mo the oldest and the most native uh, rendering engine. Over the years, these render engines have changed from Mental Ray to iRay, from iRay to now Art Render, Arno Renderer, etc. So all these things keeps changing, and uh, it's a problem keeping up for us because now when the when the render engines change all the settings and the user interface changes. And the worst part is the material maps don't work with another render engine. All right, so that is the problem huh? offhand. But don't worry about this for now. At the moment, we are going to use Scanline Renderer. Now, if you are a master at using Scanline Renderer, you basically don't have any worries because uh, this render engine exist in all versions of 3D Studio Max. All right, so that's why we want to start you off with this one. Okay, so we choose this one, make sure it is this. All right, next thing is under common parameters, 
Can you expand on that, please? Under common parameters, this one. Do you see this down here? If you can't, I will expand my screen and show you. Do you see this? Okay, click on this and expand this. Then now you see a lot of settings happening already. Okay. Now the first item here is called the time output. This part here, you want to touch on single for now. When you click on single, that means you are rendering only one frame. What is this good for? This is good for rendering a still perspective. All right, it's one render view only, no? that's all. Okay, this part, huh? But if you work on, later on we'll touch on that, we're going to, uh, we're going to work on the active time segment and range, etc. Because we're going to render an animation out of it. All right, but not now. Okay, next part here is, what are you going to render? Hey, we by default will choose the view. The first one here, view, okay? Although sometimes we will choose region as well. When the rendering becomes so intense, you don't want to render the whole view, you just need to render a small portion of it. Then we choose region. We'll leave that later. Don't touch that for now. Okay, this one, this one got a render time implication, huh? so I better let you know, okay? Can you take a look at output size now as you scroll down here? All right. The stand, the default would be default. Uh, generally, would be three twenty by two forty. This is the smallest thing, smallest resolution. Basically, here the lower the number, the lower your resolution, the lousier the image, the image is. Clear? Okay. The rule of thumb. Uh, how about that? Now. To give you a decent image situation, all right, we are looking at we are looking at okay. Can you quite see this? We are looking at about four thousand by three thousand pixels, huh? Pixels. Okay, don't key in this one yet at the moment. I'm just explaining. All right, don't key in this, huh? Now this is what we call a uh, uh, more or less a print resolution. Okay print resolution. This resolution is close to being what we call a 4K resolution. You know TV you know, these days. TV, they always like to do this 2K, 4K, 8K kind of thing. Huh? All right. So we are looking at about, this is about 4,000 pixels. That's why it's nearly 4K resolution, so to speak. Huh? All right. Later on, we'll show you when we come to that as well, what is the easier way to do this. But as a rule of thumb, this will give you this format will give you a proportion 3 by 4 image, okay? Because it's 3, the height proportion is 3 units, and then the width proportion is 4 units. So it gives you a 3 by 4 image. You know your, your TV these days, right? You know what format it exists in, uh, by the way. You know the movie format or not? Any, any clue? No, uh, if you do not, then I think... Uh, being designers, you need to be quite in tune with this. The movie theaters use what we call the 16 by 9 format. Okay, please remember this. Huh? 16 by 9 because that's the smallest they can, you know, they can divide down. Huh? That's why there's a 16, it's a funny number. Okay, that means horizontally there's 16 units, vertically there's 9 units. And then it's a very longish format, that one. Okay, these days it's a fashionable thing to use this format. But the 3 by 4 format has been traditionally used all along, okay? And our, if you notice, our paper size is very close to that 3 by 4 format, all right? That's why we've got the A sizes, uh, the A4, A3, A1, A0, etc., things like that, all right? For your previews, ladies and gentlemen, please take note, huh? please take note, okay? For your render previews, today we're not doing printing yet. We're not doing render hardcore yet, huh? so we don't touch this part. Now, recommended limit or recommended number would be 800 by 600. Can you tune your, tune your render output size to this one first or not? The width is 800 and your height is 600. So you get a 1.333 image aspect, image ratio aspect. 
Next, we scroll down a little bit. Make sure you activate this portion here called force to side that. All right. Just a brief explanation here. This force to sided option pretty much means this. If I have a sheet of paper, like a geometry, a plane, and then this sheet of paper is actually my hand, eh? so I'm going to map my hand onto the sheet of paper. So I will see if I activated force to sided, I will see when I render one side, my palm texture will come out. Then when I turn the camera to the other side and it will do this, then by right I should see I should see my palm, not the back of my hand. But then I will see this also. Then I will still see the back of my hand. Two sides. Force two sided. If I do not check this force two sided option, when I render one side can be seen. When the camera turns around, I see this part, I should see my palm. No, I will not see nothing. The thing disappears. So the geometry is gone. Later on, if you if you don't check this option, the geometry simply disappears. Then we will know whether you are listening or not. Okay? This part. Trust me, when we see you in third year, you are going to understand this a lot more. Alright? Because it has implications to other rendering programs. Next one is the render output. Okay? This part here. All right, please make sure nothing happens first because we don't need to save the files for now. All right, we do not need to save the files for now. We're do still doing work. Okay. Other than that, we can leave it alone already. So we are still good. Okay, that's it. When you are done, you can close this one. Okay. So can you, for a start, Please try this. Huh? When, when you're back in this screen here, now click on, um, can you key in F9 or function? Where is my render view? Okay. Do you see this happening? If you do not see this happening, never mind. I'll show you another way. It's called rendering. Then click on render. This is the second way to do so. This one is a no, uh, quite easy proof one. You won't go wrong way of doing this. Okay. Then I show you the third way of doing so again. All right. You can hold the shift key and then click Q. Shift Q. And you will see the same thing again all over as well, like that. Shift plus Q, Shift Q. Then you will see this one as well, okay?